Well, I apologize again. I have no idea what's going on. This is ri this is ridiculous. I wonder where the I wish there was a way to uh determine what was causing it, whether it was hardware on my it can't be hardware on mine. I just bought all new hardware on my end. Can you guys hear me? Uh, my internet provider has always been, thank you, my internet provider has always been great until um, the local internet provider was bought out by another company. So I might be looking for more, a new internet provider. There's, I have a couple options where I live, um, so I might be switching, because this is ridiculous. I stuck around because my internet, the cost of my internet is is very, very cheap. Go ahead, Lee. Oh, you only have one option. I thought you just said you had a question. I wasn't reading correct. Um, I think I have two different companies to choose from at the street as a cable option. I have uh, Spectrum, which I know isn't fantastic, and I have one called BreezeLine, which is who I have. Um, my internet, I have one gigabit service, so I have a thousand, thousand meg service. I don't know if you want to call that a gigabit or not, but it's a thousand meg service, and I pay forty dollars a month. I think uh, the train wreck in Minnesota today was, as far as uh, danger goes, it was ethanol, which, though dangerous, isn't nearly as dangerous as some, and corn syrup. One, two, three, four. Uh, internet prices here uh, vary v a lot. Um, I know that, uh, I know people that live not very far away from me that pay three times as much for the same service that I get. Because it's all private companies. Three, four, five, oh, I turned too fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think it goes like this. But I don't know how far. It stopped again? Is the stream stopped or is it going now? Because this has been the most frustrating day. It works, okay. Man, you scared me again. <laughs> this is ridiculous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think it's like this. We'll check once again, but. Uh, try refreshing it, because I think it's still going. Yeah, try refreshing your stream. In France, two gigabits is 28 euros, which is probably about 30, 35 dollars here, 30, something like that. All right, so we did, we did seven. All right, one, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I think it's over one more, actually. It's really on that eighth one. How far does it go? It's one, two, three, four, five, six deep. Okay, let's try this again. Euro and dollar are almost the same. I always thought euros were like 10 to 25% more, depending on the trans uh, transfer rate at that time 
but it changes. So, 28 to 35 bucks probably, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's on this 8th one. It's not on the 7th one. Yeah, it's like this. And then we went... Oh, shit. Did they go out 7 again? I just t did that number... A dollar equals 94, so you pay $76 a month for a 100 meg. Yeah, see, it's it's so different here depending on how rural you live. Where do you live, Lee? Three, four, five, six. Seven, I think that's it. See, 80 bucks for a gig, yeah. I think I have some sort of a a, a reduced rate at this point, but I, I don't. I think mine goes up to 65 for a thousand meg service two years from now. Rural Texas, yeah. One, two, east or west Texas, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's six past that. Because that's a big difference. If you're on the east side of Texas, where Houston and Dallas are, it's a little easier than if you're in West Texas where there's there's nothing. Texas is so big, it's just it's hard to fathom how big Texas is compared to the rest of the world. Three, four, five, six, it's this one. <sighs> Fifty miles north north of San Antonio, so that's nothing. That's that you're not you're you're in the middle of nowhere. Here, let's look at that. Let's let us take a look and see where. So let's see here. Let's bring up a browser window. Yeah, that, that's not the browser that you want. That's it. Uh, this one done. Save. All right, so let's see. So I live up here by the lake near Cleveland. And he lives... You were saying 50 miles north of San Antonio. So San Antonio is central Texas. There's San Antonio. So you are... He lives here somewhere. But just for for scale, this is, this is all Texas. All of this is Texas. It's absurdly large. So like... It's bigger than the state of Texas is bigger than the country of France. <laughs> it's absurdly large. It's just it's just crazy how big Texas is. And uh there's nothing really in it. In lots of it anyways. So like you get in here, there's there's nothing out here but mountains and desert. It's a crazy place if like there's just it's it, Texas is a, is an amazing place. Uh it's also hot in Texas most of the time. Yeah, I think uh some people just don't realize just how big and diverse the United States is. It's just, when you start thinking about it, it's, it takes essentially, I've done it once, it takes essentially three days to drive across the United States if you're driving 12 plus hours. 
If you drive 12 hours a day, you're still almost three days to get across the United States. East to west. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's that one. The tipping attitude? Um, so, the, it, it's ingrained here to leave a tip, but uh, it's it's almost unnecessary anymore because the you can get to Denver from Minneapolis in th 13 hours. Right, but so from Denver to the West Coast is another 13 hours, and from Minneapolis to the East Coast is... 20 hours I mean it's just a it's a freaking ridiculous when you start looking at the numbers I mean England is the entire country of England is only like three hours wide or something <laughs> for us three hours is like a a day trip I don't something's not right there 12 hours for the entire, and that's going slow. Three, four, I think I've done something wrong here. So that's that. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, that's it. Six. And I think this is number... It's hard when everything is crooked. <laughs> so, uh, Brewster, you're talking about the tip attitude. Um, that's becoming less and less of a thing. People now want you to leave a tip, and uh, they want you to leave a tip everywhere. Uh, if you don't, if it's not a waitress at a restaurant where you sit down and eat dinner, like if she's not bringing you drinks and things, do not leave a tip. That person is getting paid a real wage. Nebraska is the worst because you can see stuff in the distance and you're still hours away. Nebraska, Kansas. I think they're the worst. Iowa. Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas there's, are the worst for driving across. Um, but, Brewster, it's... The, the whole reason for the tip attitude was... Um, waitresses didn't use to... It, it wasn't a requirement for waitresses to get um, a normal wage. They could get paid very very little as as an hourly rate and the, most of their wages came from their tips and uh that's no longer a th really the case most um places I, but yeah you should waitresses used to make two or three dollars an hour and then they relied on their tips and that's just uh just not the case any longer so but if if I go to some place, like if I order a pizza and I go pick it up, I'm not leaving a tip. If I go to Starbucks and get a coffee, I'm not going to leave a tip. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, those people did not require a tip <laughs> because they're not serving me anything. A tip is supposed to be for exceptional service, for one. Oh, everywhere asks for tips. Um, everywhere will ask you for a tip. Not a, no question whatsoever. Um, but there's uh, there's no expectation for you to give a tip. What am I looking for? Oh, walkways, right? Steep. Is that what I want? I don't even know what I want anymore. This one. Ramp turn outer oh i don't know nope definitely not that yeah i um the tip thing drives me crazy any longer because they will be upset if you don't like there's a pizza place near me that always wants a tip when all they did was make me a pizza which i i paid for and and they were paid for um so I'm not I'm not going to give the guy that that just checked me out 
a tip. It's just not doing it. This is what I'm after, right there. Yes. Uh, but and it's worse with the old, the younger generations wanting tips. Um, but I I feel no obligation to tip anyone, but a waitress who I sat at a table and she brought me drinks and served me my meal. And it's, it's not even really um, an issue any longer because pay isn't like it used to be. I think I need to cut that one off that corner. That one doesn't go there. I've been tipped with weed before. That would be funny, actually. Something's not right here. How do I match that? I kind of want two in a row. And that looks too much. Now it's three in a row. So how do I do this? Like. Something's not right. Something's not right. I got something. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Because it should match. So. Right. There's one there. It's like this comes over one f too far. Something, something, something's out of something's out of whack. It's gonna drive me crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's number eight there. I didn't think. I thought the U.S. was really the only place that. Tipping was a uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. It's because it's five wide. Two, three. Oh, it's only. F Sorry, on the wrong line. One, two, three, four. So it's five wide, which makes it an odd number. What did this one end up being? So, where do you guys. I know you guys are from all over Europe. Uh, Jongo, you say tipping is a thing in the UK now. Has it always been a thing in the UK? And and what about uh, what about France or Portugal or Germany or Switzerland? Do you guys have a tip? Do you guys tip at restaurants there, or is there an expectation of tipping? Okay, let's see. Let's see, something's weird here. Like half a block off. See, this is where one, two, three, four, five, six. It's one wider. What the hell did I do wrong? It's a block, and then we go up till. I did something wrong and it's going to drive me crazy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's between seven and eight. So in a lot of places here, there's an expectation Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's between seven and eight. How did they do that? Um, so here you'll often see um, an automatic 
you'll see an automatic tip suggested at the bottom of your bill and it'll be like 18 percent of whatever you paid 18 to 20 percent is kind of what's expected uh, at a restaurant which i think is i don't know if they're paying their waitresses well so it's between between seven and eight is where it starts yeah bartenders are bartenders are a little bit different they don't expect to be paid uh just you pay them if you want better service one two three four five six so it's between these two So let me. So this one is seven. This one is eight. How the hell did I do this? Or seven yeah it's like that okay so this is what it should look like on this side something's wrong on the other side so it's just like that yeah so I'm screwed up over here see that in, in my mind that's what a tip should be if you if you have a relationship with the with the restaurant or with the waiter or with the bartender and they consistently give you good service you should pay extra but their salary should not be part um of my bill like it should be it should be the salary should be baked into the price of the service not something that's expected through a tip but that's not how it is here and so as any restaurant in which you interact with another person, they now there's now an expectation of a tip. I just certainly don't pay it. So it's here's the problem. It goes here. It's like this. That's where the problem was. I hate trying to make stuff match. It drives me insane. Mostly because I, I just am terrible at this stuff. But I'm trying. That's all we can do is try. You guys all need to come out here and, and help me build this station because I'm utterly garbage at this stuff. Yeah, bars is definitely the place where I have... Uh, have had the best service um in general my habit at a bar has always been to uh i and it's just where i come from um i grew up in pennsylvania and there you put your money on the bar so if i was going to go in and i was going to drink for the evening i would uh, put a 50 dollar bill on the bar in front of me under my glass and the bartender would spend the evening making change from that $50 bill and whatever was left when he was at the end. <laughs> whatever was left at the end, he would get the, the change of. So if he made me more drinks, the the drunk, the faster I got drunk, <laughs> the faster I would quit and the more money he would make. So... Yeah, before I was married, my wife was a waitress, um, and she ha she regularly dealt with a a Saudi Arabian prince, and uh, he would leave her three hundred dollar tips all the time. He tried to get both she and I to go to Saudi Arabia with him, but that seemed like a bad idea, <laughs> so we didn't go. Congratulations, Addison. You just bought yourself a badger. Excellent. You should send provisions. Far points your dealer. What am I dealing now? I 
I uh, I tend to be a pretty good tipper. Oh. Oh, Cerulean's your deal. I will if you've got good ships, um I will happily uh push your ships. To be honest, I I just want people to buy ships and play the damn game. So, if you've got ships that are worth buy, buying and building, absolutely. I will put you together with as many people as I can possibly find. All right, so that oh, I have to do all these verticals now. These are boring, but they have to be done. Plus, I want to uh, I want to spend some time uh, testing all these ships. I want to, uh, and then I can actually make an opinion on them. I uh, I was able to give you my opinion on Cerulean ship because I've watched him for hours. And hours. <laughs> Build and use it. Um, yeah, he and I have talked about that particular ship multiple times. Yeah, that's the... Uh, so I hope to spend at least one day a week testing out everybody's... All the designers mining ships. People that will at least let me use their ships. But um, I, I kind of want to build a test uh, procedure to test all the different things on the ship. And so we have some sort of a, a not necessarily a scoring system, but that way I can make an apples to apples comparison between ships. Uh, because often you're trying to buy a ship, but you have no idea. You have no idea what it's... Uh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have done it this way. That's all right. So we, you can start comparing ships accurately. Shouldn't have done that. Um, and I wouldn't mind setting up a way to test fly ships. But when that happens, you're also, uh, as a the owner of the test ship, you're you're risking the ability to lose it, somebody just flying off with it. But uh, I guess at that point you just revoke operator and do your best to get it back. I don't know. How do you get back a ship if somebody steals it? You really can't. That doesn't go there. So if you let somebody test fly, I guess you could just do it. Test flights happen in the in the PTU. Right? Because if it happens in the PTU, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but if somebody's flying the ship, they can just turn the... They can just leave the safe zone. You always have to consider the guy that's not gonna... That's gonna be the pirate and just run off with it. But, uh... So I think the test universe is probably the best place to do most testing. Stealing a ship on purpose. But it is pirating. I mean, that's they've managed to trick you into handing them a ship. I mean, I think that is a form of pirating. I have no problem with the concept of somebody running off with a ship uh, but you also want to you also want to try and mitigate that risk so I, I would think that you would only really test ships on the player test universe where it doesn't matter something's not right there and I don't want to run to Kai for every time I have a problem Especially player-to-player -player conflict. And the reason I, uh, I even have these kind of opinions is, I tend to, in most games, I'm a I'm a pirate myself, so I don't I don't see the problem with those behaviors, as long as they're within the rules of the game.
I don't think that's worth a ban either if they convinced you to give it to them. I think if they convince you to give it to them, it's all good. It's like stealing a car on a test drive. It certainly happens. This game had to have the decommission option active for all ships. So you can have more. So what do you mean, um, Rooster? You mean that you think it's okay for them to to run off with ships, or how do you see that working? Do you think this kind of uh, stealing of ships is okay? Somebody gives it to you to test, and you steal it. I, I'm surprised that people sell blueprints. I would think that ships would be the way to go, as opposed to blueprints. Oh, do I have any half? I feel like a ship left somewhere and got stolen fine, it's my fault, but if I lend it out and don't get it back, I'd be mad. So this is the way I look at it. If I if if I did if I took an action that led to somebody being able to fly away with the ship, <laughs> then then it's kind of my own doing. Like you, all you had to do was not give them the ship. There's especially since we have a test universe. There's a there is a uh, mechanism for either that or it revoking operator allow uh, automatically tows the ship back you know that sort of thing yeah i think a hijacking like being able to deed a ship that you found would be is fantastic. I think I think that just should be a thing. Um, it's not yet, but I think it should be. But there has to be, and I, I don't want to say limitations because I don't think there should be limitations on what can be stolen. Um, but there needs to be a mechanism for. Do those not line up? Those don't line up. How do I? Something's not right there. Um, there needs to be a mechanism for a player to resist that, or to f fight it anyways. So if they get your ship, what can you do? They, they can't just steal the ship easily, like a, hij a hijacking deed needs to have time limitations, or um, it should take a long time. Oh, that's right, it doesn't go all the way to the corner, that's why. It only goes straight down. Okay. Right. Yeah, and I. But I think like so. If nobody should be able to hide, like let's say, let's say it's me, and I'm, I'm, my ship is parked next to an asteroid, and uh, I'm over there pickaxing it. If someone sneaks in and uh, starts to steal it. I should get a notification bef just before, at some point before the the deed takes place. Like it can't. It's got to take more than just a moment. Like right now, a registration deed only takes a moment to uh, to kick in. So if like there was a timer, uh, as far as I'm concerned, hosting uh, issues all need fixed. <laughs> Like, uh, I don't look as at uh, hosting issues being a, a solution. Where is that? 
Do I not have any more of those? That's this one, and I'm almost out. He would need to kill me. Yeah, if he had to kill me, that would be fine. Because if he shot me, um, and then took the ship, I would be fine with it. But if he just tried to hop in the seat and fly off with it, I think there needs to be some sort of a... Even hopping in the seat and flying off with it would be okay. But he wouldn't be able to hijack deed it for, an, for a specific amount of time, giving me some time to... To try and get it back, but <laughs> that's right. If you don't, it's a uh... it won't let you move until the right code is put in. That would be okay. I I would forget. Constantly blow myself up. All right, I need an advanced crafting table. I assume there's one around here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Inventory. What do I not have? What is this? There it is. There it is. I thought there'd be one. All right, we need. We're gonna need a lot of these. <laughs> they were all labeled in German. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd be screwed if they were labeled in German. I could see having to put a code in. You'd have to hide the uh, the YOLO rack with those chips in it. Yeah, you would have to... Getting somebody to put the wrong code in... And you not putting the wrong code in. <laughs> like, stopping me from putting the wrong code in would be the trick. I can think of a few ways to do it. So, what about... Uh, see, I like the idea of the rangefinder in the seat thing. So, if... Every time that somebody sat in the seat, it wipes. It requires the code to be put in. So you put the you push your button code in, and as long as you're in that seat, that button code stays in. When you get out, the button code wipes. And that button, that code, is what allows, I don't know, your some other system to turn on and off like just your thrusters don't work unless you have those uh oh you don't like the oh you can hear the when you can hear the range finder is that what you mean all right well is how else there's no other way to know if somebody's in the seat though correct like there's no there's no boolean variable of a of being in the seat is there is it is there another mechanism for knowing if there's a person in the seat How does YOLO make it possible to know you're in the seat? Hey, squad leader.
Yeah, that's what we're talking about is... But I, I don't know... The idea is you'd have to have the button deactivate every time you left the seat. I just know myself that if I have a button that activates the generator, I'm never going to turn it. I'm never going to turn it off. Like, it's just going to stay on all the time, and then it's going to defeat the purpose. But if I have to put it in every time I jump this, jump in the seat, that's a different story. So as soon as I get out of that seat, it uh, requires me to... It resets the security code. I'm too lazy to turn it off every time I get out. I can barely turn the generators off when I need to turn them off, let alone every time I get out of the seat. With a rangefinder... Yep, that's what we were talking about, the rangefinders. I think that's a great way. They're all saying it's too loud when you're in the seat. Yeah, I would think the idea would be it would not just kill the generators, but it would disengage the thrusters. You can't do anything. It turns off the flight computer. Kind of like we did. We had two flight computers on uh, the ship that's up there. Two sets of thrusters. But if it was the same setup, but it was all the same thrusters. Just disengages the FCU somehow. You'd have to put it far away, I suppose, like if you shot it down the length of your ship so it hit you in the back when you were in the seat. That would be the only way to make the sound stop anyways. I wish the seat just had a, a Boolean value, whether you were in it or not. You know, a field in use. Occupied, like an occupied field in the data value of the seat. Oh, the sound is emitted at the target? Ugh. That's, uh, that sucks. Yeah, that would, uh, well, I don't know. I've, I've seen it used, so it, it must not be too horrendous. People definitely use that setup. That would also... well, it might also work. <laughs> so it recognizes when you get out of the seat as opposed to when you're in the seat. An endo moves a range finder like a cargo lock with speed. It's just, I know it works. I've seen I've seen that system used where the the uh, range finders on the floor directly in front of the seat, and it turns the sh essentially turns the ship on and off. So the variation in the cargo lock might not be enough, or the in the range finder might not be enough to turn it on and off. I feel like um still over one, but I'm gonna have to come down like that with these. Yeah, I would think it does work. I know I've seen seen it used. So the the endo must not move enough to get out of the range finders. Um path all 
All right, there's one. And now I have to put the front on it, right? I think I just closed all this in last time. Because I like the idea. I, I didn't think about it being loud, but I like the idea of the rangefinder. And as soon as I get out of the seat, it drops into a, the, sh the entire ship drops into an idle position. And then when you get back in the seat, it asks for a, it asks for a code. I would be fine with. And then it gives you so many chances at that code. I would be okay with that, I think. Oh, okay. I got you, Brucer. Yeah, there's got to be a way. And it, you might be able to to uh, have it recognize you in the seat. So when you s there's a rangefinder looking for you to be in the seat. All right, imagine this. The, there's a rangefinder directly in front of the seat. And when you sit down... It recognizes you sit, and then it turns that rangefinder off and turns the rangefinder next to you on, which is watching for you to get out of the seat. Would that work? Do you know what I mean? That way, it wouldn't detect you every time you just walked past the seat, but only when you get in it. So it would essentially be, it's going to either be checking the seat or it's going to be checking next to the seat kind of thing. So the noise would be off when you were in the seat, but it would look for you to get out. So when you sit down, it asks you for your your key, essentially. It's looking for a key, and, a, and it waits until the right key goes in. Uh, and you could put some sort of security system where if you put the key in wrong too many times, something happens. I'm still missing an entire row here. Two. I think there's two, actually. Right, but I, I'm a hundred percent certain that the the rangefinder in your seat works. Like I've I've seen that in use. So your your endo drift must not be enough that uh, it goes out of the rangefinder's view. I mean, I don't, I'm not arguing that the, that your endo doesn't drift like a cargo lock does. But cargo lock beams don't, don't measure anything. You can't, When you stand in front of a cargo lock beam, it doesn't doesn't give you an output, does it? I did at least I didn't think they did. I I thought cargo lock beams gets used for guidance and things because they're easier to see, not because they uh they act like a rangefinder. These take forever to build. Now we need a half. <laughs> so you use player detection during mining lasers on. So anytime you get the seat, the lasers turn on. I, I think it, you could use it for a whole variety of things. I would think, in my mind, anytime you got out of the seat, the ship would essentially drop into standby mode. Yeah, I didn't... Cargo lock beams, I didn't think saw an endo. Yeah, they, they only get used for, for uh, you can detect an asteroid with them, right? You can't test to detect anything else. Which 
one is this? Nope, that's not the right one. Five? That's it there. Okay. Oh, hey, Barkon. The Endo doesn't drift. The Rangefinder does. If the ship side slips or travels over a certain speed, the beam starts hitting other stuff. You can see this phenomenon in other stuff by pulling out a cable tool and looking at how far the anchor point is moving you fly. At 100 meters a second, the rangefinder has dispersed about half a meter. Well, and to be honest, what we were talking about before, at least there at the end, was that if we if we only detected the endo sitting in the seat, just just the moment of sitting in the seat, unless you were getting in the seat when the when the ship was at a at a rate at a high rate, it it would see you sit down because we're talking about the rangefinder, you get in the seat, it detects you, and then that rangefinder turns off, and a secondary rangefinder looking for you to get out of the seat comes on. I can act, I can see that system working. If 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 I'm describing it well enough, it's it's a pair of rangefinders that work in conjunction with each other. I'll have to test that out, Barkan, though, and I want to see... I never thought about using a cable tool. So I'm assuming with the cable tool trick, you click... You put a piece of cable, an end of cable down, and try stretching it, and you'll see the drift. The mount-dismount concept is good, unless you're in a situation where you can take damage and get force dismounted by debris, and at that point, just use a cockpit mount dismount and skip the range finders altogether. Okay, so let me think this through. Okay, so you just use, if you're, if you're, in a ship that's not exposed, where you're going to get pushed out of the seat by something, then the mount and dismount system should work. I do not have a nav logging ship at my station. There are chips um, that exist for the station, if that's what you're looking for. I do not own a nav ship. It's going to be one of my next... It'll probably be my first ship purchase uh, is a nav logging ship. And it'll probably be the ship that determines how big my hangar is on my capital ship. Because it's really the only thing I don't plan on. A, or a pivoting seat that isn't usable in its dismount position. Oh, so you just want to fly out here, Vega? Is that what you're saying? It's about, it's a little over a thousand kilometers. I can give you directions. If we're friended, you should be able to see my stations, right? Technically, yes. So, <laughs> so if, are you at Origin now? Yeah. So, let me think. I would have to... The way I did it... So, last time I came back this way, I... Uh, so you fly under the belt for the vast majority of the way. So I went to like origin, uh, like down to origin one, I think, is at the bottom. And I flied it, started flying 
in the general direction of my old station, which I think is called Derelict. I didn't go towards it. I just, I didn't, like, because it's in the middle of the belt. I just went under the belt in its general direction. And then my other stations showed up. <laughs> like, you'll see Farpoint Station 3, once you get close. Farpoint Station, here, let me see if I still have your, I still have somebody's map here. Hold on. I got a map of somebody's. Open in browser. All right, so, so you're at origin. My station is underneath the belt, like here. So I just flew this direction, and I have an old station called Derelict that's in the middle of the belt. I just flew, flew towards it in, in its general direction, but I stayed underneath the belt. And then Farpoint Station 3 shows up, and it is at the edge of the belt, still out in the clear. And then you go towards Farpoint Station 2, which is where I am now. If that makes sense to you. It's, uh, but I did it in a little ship. So, I mean, if you have an actual ship <laughs> that would, that's meant for travel, it's an easy, it's an easy trip because it's only a hundred, I think it was 150 kilometers in the belt. The rest of it's all flown underneath the belt. All right, it looks like I got that one done. That one is definitely not done. So now I have to do the same thing on this side, which is a pain in the ass. I think I have to. I'm going to try and be smarter this time. I just did it because I was being lazy, and uh, that was the easiest. That was the easiest way was to put a station right at the edge of the belt, so I could fly the vast majority of it without having to worry about asteroids. It was it was out of sheer laziness, not not genius of any kind. What is? Oh, I already had that in there. Ah, I'm dumb sometimes. I dislike that they look the same. Yeah, so if you're Origin 1, you just go underneath the belt and to the right. <laughs> 400. It is, especially when you have a ship with no. Um, asteroid avoidance whatsoever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not fun to do it that way. Uh-oh. Right, I thought I was lagging out. That's it? Oh, no, I'm just on the wrong side. I was hitting the ceiling. It's like, what is going on? Yeah, I would love a ship with good, uh, I do not, there, it's outside of ISAN range anyways. But not very far. Yeah, if, but it, but it is reliable within that, it's fairly reliable within that range. So that's really all I, uh, I don't mind going slower if I have to pay attention less. So, uh. I like AAS even if I have to fly slower. Because on any long trip, my brain starts to uh, not pay attention. And that's when I run into stuff. It's not usually the ship's fault. It's a, a combination of being impatient and lazy. So I keep cranking the speed up, and then eventually I hit something. So... Uh, Oh, I hate these green dots.
Yeah, every ship's a little different. Um, and I think that the accuracy... It's not about accuracy of the auto... The asteroid avoidance. I, I think it's a combination of how quickly your ship can strafe. Um, and how tight your rangefinder setup is. Well, right. Well, that's for sure. If you're going straight to zone 5, I think that you're right. That a good asteroid avoid system, even at probably 75 or 80 meters a second, is faster than, than a trip twice that long. Strafe the thickness ratio. That You're talking about length to girth ratio? <laughs> um... Right, how quickly you can strafe in the narrowest dimension of your ship, for sure. So if you have a flat, wide ship, you're going to strafe up and down, and if you have a long, thin ship, you tend to strafe left and right. Right. Those those big ten rocks take forever. Once they, once they have... De-rendered. That's when you're. That's when the danger happens. Because uh, unless your auto avoidance sort of has a uh, contingency for that, you're kind of in trouble. All right, I'm gonna have to let a few of these build because I get it. I use them faster than they get built. We should uh, we should have a contest on auto avoidance. We build a stock shaped ship. Let's say it's just a cube. The T10 level of detail render is at two kilometers. If they despend to render. What is it? Two kilometers? Because I feel like sometimes it's it's right on top of you before it even starts to to render. <laughs> that's what I was that's what I was getting at, Addison. His uh, his strafe to thickness ratio is uh, it's getting a little dirty. Right, a cube is an absolutely terrible shape for avoidance, but it would be an interesting. Um, platform to test every to test the different auto avoidance methods uh, if you had a standardized ship that you were just dropping yolo in that way you could see using the same ship frame how the different asteroid avoidance systems worked if that makes sense so you'd, you'd make a uh, a default ship and the only reason I was using a cube is because your uh, strafe to thickness ratio would be you know one to one essentially. So we would determine you'd pre-make a ship that everybody would uh, try and put auto avoidance on. It could be a contest for you builders. The best auto avoidance on a on a ship that's no bigger than say a. Uh, five five crate cube it's got to fit within the size of a five by five by five cube or whatever size you predetermine but Because other, if if you're trying to to make a comparison, there's you really can't compare ships of the uh, you can't adequately compare ships of different uh, dimensions because that has such a such an impact on how auto avoid or asteroid avoidance works. 
So you'd have to have everybody start with the same same shaped ship. And you might have to do it with a, a different shape. But I would think that a cube would be a good place because it's not the best shape. It would pose problems to everybody's system. So the system, the auto avoidance system would be better. I mean, you can you can see Marca and Relecta on along the route for sure, but it's way to the right of all that stuff. So if you go out of uh, Origin One and you head under the belt and you take like a thirty-five or forty-degree turn to the right into the belt, that's kind of that way. Like here, let me show that. I can bring that browser back up. So if this is origin, and this is straight into it, right? This is negative y. This is positive y. Are you with me? So you're gonna go positive y. And it's 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 level with the it's kind of in the belt with zone five, but it's out out here somewhere. Can you see my mouse? Oh no, let's try this. It's here somewhere. You'll find my station. So if you leave from zone one or origin one, which is at the bottom, and you just kind of head this direction, you'll see it. But you get it, it's at like a thousand and fifty kilometers or something though. So yeah, but I don't have the. Uh, I suppose this uh, this website always lags my computer so bad. I don't think so. unless you're upside down it should be to the right. So let, let's zoom out here. Where's origin? Oh, we're, on, we're going the wrong way. Oh, this is so laggy for me for whatever reason. Oh, stop spinning. I'm not even touching the mouse. It's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I never have any luck with this website. Where's filters? How do I get filters? I don't want to log out. Settings. Map filter settings. All right, ships or turn all this stuff off. Maybe that'll make it better. Not really. Well, it's, it's definitely less laggy, but I turned off too much. Yeah, it's terrible. Station, it says stations are on. All right, well, there we go, public. It's so laggy for me. It, it has always been this way. It doesn't matter what I have running. All right, so if you're at origin one, which is here at the bottom, and you're looking straight into the belt, you're going to fly under, under the belt to the right, and it's like... Uh, let's see, can I, can I make a, add, oh, I can't add a point because I don't have a login on this guy. You're going to go under the belt and to the right. It's, it's way out here somewhere. It's not to the left, it's to the right. Yeah, I always have a hell of a time at this site. But yeah, you'll fly underneath it and to your right, and it's over here somewhere. I'm sure somebody knows the uh, the nearest ISAN coordinates, but I, d I do not. I should have written. Yeah, everybody says up Arkin, and I don't I don't know what it is. It's uh, it's been like that forever. It's always been that particular slight lags. The 
absolute crap out of my computer. Is there no more holes there? Did we get them all? Alright, looks like we got all those. <laughs> I've got 11 station expansions available. I don't even know how many stations. I've already got 19. Oh. Looks like I've already got all 30 unlocked. Interesting. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from Marca or not. Um, it might still be too far because it's a. It's at a thousand kilometers in, so you're going to have to be more than five hundred before you even see it. And I don't. I think Marca's is going to be too far away. I need to figure out. Uh, I need to figure out the ISAN. coordinates for uh, whatever the closest ISAN coordinates are. I need to go the other way. What am I doing? Trying to talk and do stuff is uh, always inefficient. You don't know the nearby coordinates, do you? Damage? He always seems to know more about my stuff than I do. Or at least how far to the positive Y it is. I think it's like 200 positive Y and 1,000 in. But uh, I do not know off the top of my head. Uh, where'd Spotify go? All right. All righty. I'm pretty excited to be able to put my capital ship together tomorrow. Tomorrow, that'll be the plan. We'll be to uh, put the capital ship together and get it out of the dock. You guys will have to help me, because I literally have no idea uh, what I have to do. There's there's not any sort of tutorial for it. It's not one that I've found. Do you guys know of a tutorial that tells you how to build a capital ship? Yeah, that's just, that's what I was thinking. So, there you go, Vega. If you aim in that direction, that will get you certainly. If you just point towards Y positive two seventy and Z a thousand, you'll be uh, you'll be well within the range to see it, uh, to see the transponder for it. Like I said, there's two stations. You're going to aim towards number three, Farpoint Station. So I'm at Farpoint Station 2. Let's see. Uh, why don't I... Let's see if I can do this. This. Stations. Farpoint Station. View. Rename. Farpoint Station. OK. 
confirm stations rename point uh we'll call it midpoint point stopover Right, now they're they're named over. My station, where I am currently, is called Farpoint Station. If if I look up there, you'll see Farpoint Stopover. That's at the bottom of the belt. It's in the clear. So that's the one you're gonna you're gonna aim for the stopover, and I'm 125 kilometers from the edge of the belt at that point. Well, it certainly should if I haven't. Stations. Let's stop over. You. Friends, company, group. Thank you for pointing that out. That would have been a bit of a... Derelict. Derelict station. That's my original station is the derelict station. Also need to add you. Our point stop over. Nobody else has been there except me, so Vega, add access, and then Farpoint Station, add access, there we go. Thank you, Jongo. I will, let me uh, save that link. That way it's uh, done. That way I can look at it this evening. Okay. What was I doing? I forget. Oh yeah, I was filling in all these gaps. But uh, yeah, when you get here, you're welcome to do anything you want. You have access to everything. Um, I need to make sure and give you access to the propellant ship. Ships. There's a propellant ship here. That you'll be able to use. And there is a storage ship here. That you can use. So if you look. Get out. Let me turn this off. So this sphere here is one of those storage spheres, and it just has random extra ores in it. You're welcome to whatever's there. And then up there, you can't quite see it, but there's a giant stack of propellant tanks that are technically a ship, and you're you're welcome to use the propellant there. All right, now we can turn this back on. And uh, while you're here, you're welcome to do anything you want. Don't uh, if you want to build station, build station. You want to build your own ships, build your own ships. There is a full-sized down at the very bottom here is a full-sized ship hangar, so you can use the SSC or store your ships or whatever you'd like to do. There are crafting benches in this uh, tower here. Uh, you can build yourself a house. Take uh, take a section and. Build yourself a house. As soon as I can get my capital ship, we'll be back here doing more stuff. I just, and then I'll be able to help people get out here a lot quicker. Uh, I, I just am short on. Don't I didn't have the resources to do it, and that's what we're trying to remedy. So, trying to fill all those current holes that I have in uh, my ability to get people together. I currently rely on all these wonderful guys with capital ships to get me everywhere. Jongo was today's taxi driver. So I do appreciate him. Uh, what are we doing? I gotta turn over. Yeah, Jongo was nice enough to fly me out to zone 5. And then again out to here, so 
He did double duty over the last couple of days. This one here looks like. I like the Titan asteroids. There's three of them you can see from here. I was th I've never tried to build a station on an asteroid, so it might be a fun, another fun, another fun uh, experiment. Also thought it'd be fun to just start cramming stations as close together as you could possibly stick them to make an entire like neighborhood of stations. That way, if, if Siege ever does come, it'll be very hard to Siege a station that has 10 other stations around it. I think that it would be fun. It would be a, it would be a big fight. You always seem to need Yimrium, Jongo. You're welcome to the extra I have, which I'm, I think I have a, quite a bit extra. I didn't have any issues finding it around uh, Green Hell, so. And you've been so helpful that I don't uh, I don't mind giving it to you at all. Right, did I put it back on that one? I did. I'm almost done with this section. It'll be nice. Yeah, we put the uh, NTPS is the one who built that. Uh, Hangar hall. He did that overnight. You need it to the for ships. Thanks. Oh yeah, I will give you. Uh, I I mean I don't know exactly how much is left once we uh, build the capital ship, but you're welcome to whatever's left. I have several hundred stacks that I was able to uh, to mine right around there. Oh, I need more. It's always like an, an endless an endless building. Stations use so many parts. Just so many parts. How many we got? Seven? Eight? We'll wait for ten and then I'll start clicking again. Close enough. All right, now which piece do we need? This one. It's so dark. All right, up we go. Oh, <laughs> stuck a little, little extra one in there. Oh, you're... You need the Yimrium for your, your next two ships, your Crawler X. I thought you already built that thing. Or you're just short. How much Yimrium do you need? How much uh, Yimrium do you need, Jongo? If it's... I wonder how much is here. Let's go. Let's go take a look. We'll see what's in this thing. I don't know who filled it. Somebody magic. It just magically filled itself one day. It's got all sorts of stuff in it. Oh, there's another asteroid there. That's another Titan asteroid. Like I said, I think there's three. Actually, I know there's three within. Viewing distance. Uh, nope, no Yimrim in here. It's, oh, that's, uh, I don't think that's. Oh, I just disconnected that. That was not what I wanted to do. Damn it. <laughs> I'm hearing myself now. Oh crap, where is the window? There. <laughs> there we go. Alright, it's muted anyways. 
All right, let's see what's in here. Uh, I see Carnite. Searchrite. There's at least one Yimrium. Two. Oh, I knew what I should do. We should just click on one of those Yimrium and see. It's got to be a way better way. Uh, all right. 12. There's 12 Yimrium here. Hello, Mustoga. So not not quite as much as you were looking for. Fort Knox. Um, I don't know if you want to call it Fort Knox. It's uh, it's 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 eventually going to be something. We're still in that process. I've been I took a break on working on it, so now it's like starting over again. I don't remember what the dimensions are. Don't remember. Oh, this storage with the ore. Oh, yeah, that's uh, I, I, that's the worst Fort Knox ever. Everybody has, everybody has access to it, and it's just floating there in the middle. So, uh, it's more like just leaving your money out on the table. So the hope eventually is that each one of these little blocks will be will be available for somebody to move into. And then on the back side here, there will be a little landing pad for your or your uh, station hopper. This will be mostly windows in the front. These corner sections will be docks here, and we're going to try and work some other docking places in top and bottom. And then I'll have something else in the middle. I'm not, I'm not liking the way this is all coming together, but and then there will be a station or a... Uh, uh, ship hanger there at the bottom and we'll incorporate it somehow and i thought about putting a capital hanger all the way at the top which is a, another block past what you can see that way we have access to people can people have access to this ship creator as well as a uh, ship dock a capital dock if they want to start something and then they can have their own spaces i know none of this is really functional at this time but we're going to build it anyways uh, it's definitely a big station at this point. Uh, I've unlocked. I've unlocked all 30 zones. Um, I don't have them. Uh, I have the ability to unlock all 30 zones, anyways. But uh, we got a long way to go. We tried to split it, split all the zones, so that uh, we don't really run into the. It is going to be a lot of work, but it's just uh, it's just time at this point. So we shall. We shall I wish you could see it better. I hate the LOD stuff at this game. So like these are docks to park ships. I want another one on, kind of at the bottom here, almost to take this and invert it off the bottom as well, and then have a central area. Not quite like this, but we'll have something in the center to connect the ship hangar with the capital hangar, and they'll have docks on them as well. So we'll see. Um, I've got lots of ideas, and it's just it's just time. So we'll see how it comes along. Um, lots and lots to do. Well, I, d I didn't want to do big and blocky. Big and blocky is probably the best use of space. But uh, big arena for combat endos. I would I would like to do a lot of things like that. Um, I was talking with Happy yesterday about getting the uh, the racing going again. So we'll see how the racing goes. Um, all right, you guys have to give me a second. I gotta. You gotta step away for just a minute, something popped up. So just give me a minute, talk amongst yourselves, and I'll be right back.
Sorry about that, guys. Life gets in the way sometimes. You need to ask... You're saying Sega, so Kai, to disable the safe zone on one of your stations. And... Uh, Oh, you're going to have him just disable safe zones in specific areas of the station? Can he do that? I never even thought about being able to, having to disable them uh, individually. Give me a second. Come on, connect to that stupid thing. Oh, the whole station gets tabled. That's, oh, I thought that's what you were saying. You need to ask Kai to disable the safe zone on one of your stations. Oh, you want him to disable the safe zone in one of your stations, which is inside the safe zone. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I got I screwed something up in the process of walking away. Alright, so these are all I only have two more of these to do, which I'm pretty excited about. And then I have to do this uh, invert it on the bottom as well. The destroyable part would be uh kind of awesome and frustrating at the same time. So that's the, that's just on these. How did I do this middle section? I think this part looks nice, but I don't remember how I did it. Only station parts is not possible. Oh, are you saying your station is like half in the safe zone and in zone one, half in zone one and half outside of zone one? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So your the uh, safe zone sphere of your ship of your station is half within zone one and half within zone two. So. You're both inside and outside the zone one safe zone. That's pretty clever. I hadn't thought about that. Have you? And if he turns off the the uh, safe, then you'll be able to kill yourself. You'll be able to shoot each other in about half of it. That's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't spent much time thinking about that. All right, how do I do this? It's been a while now, and I don't remember what I did. Well, it makes sense to 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 put something like that. All right, so it's uh, one. No, let's not use that. Let's use these. These are easier to count. It's amazing how many people are trying to make some content and we just can't we can't get anybody together. So we're going to have to start we're going to have to start uh capitalizing on all of these ideas. 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 So let's see. It's nine across. All right, let's see. I'm just going to have to do this one at a time. I do not remember how I did it. Put that down. Put your arm down. Run. I do not remember Crazy, crazy Race. That was the... Um, 
That's when we had the ship that took like four or five endos a piece. So let's see, there was one gap. So it's here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's like that. Right, because this comes up this way. Yeah, and it leaves a single gap for you to fly in. Okay, and we went nine, and then what do we do after nine? Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to find a better um, method for advertising. I don't. I'd like to uh, I'd like to start advertising better. I have a you have a wonderful night, Vega. Um, I hope to see you out here soon. We can get you a chip if you have a capital ship to get out here. So that's right there, and uh, I look forward to you coming out. Up and then a corner. I hope to actually see all of you out here. I'd love for all of you to come out here and us actually start to play together. Um, I'm trying to get all of the kind of necessary things out here. Try to position it where we can you can supply yourself. And uh, now that we have a capital, we will have a capital hangar, capital dock. And we have a ship hangar so you guys can work in the ship designer. Advertise in stream titles beforehand is another way. You're saying in my stream titles? Well, and getting, I think getting notable players involved uh, is important. So like Good Praxis and Pegrin. Good Praxis and Pegrin were excellent. Just advertising those two names got more people to watch which means more people would be um, inclined to, uh, to join us. So if we can get, if we can get, who, we just gotta figure out who, uh, who else, what are the other big names in, in Starbase? Well, yeah, we should, we should definitely be trying to those of us who are all in here that stream you xenon happy's a big one you're right um cerulean streams from here sometimes scenario which i haven't seen him much lately i don't know spice rub um but i appreciate anybody that plays Where in the world? This one, right? No, we decided it wasn't that one. Cubes? Edges? Oh, I always lose this stupid one. Slope. Right, no, I want the half slope. Half slope. That's what. All right, put you two together. You want to start streaming? You'll look at setting it up again. It's not hard. Streaming, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's certainly, uh, it's the, the only hard part is just, um, just doing it. It's just just trying to be consistent in doing it. I think that's it. So we went across. We came up one hole and one and a half. Um, I think there's a there's there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> if you have terrible internet, which I, I always thought I had great internet until the last couple of weeks. And I don't know what's going on today, but I'm going to start looking at the other one.
Um, I've seen Chaos Online plays... He streams all the time. He just doesn't stream Starbase. Um, that's really the difference. He is on... He streams almost every day. So we... One, oh, it's just one up. I'm up too high. I, I don't think you have to set permanent times. Um, now he's a he's another Geth guy, isn't he? Because I've seen him in your I've talked to him in in the Geth channel some. Uh, he does a lot of Star Citizen anymore. Um, I don't think you have to set up a permanent time. Consistency is does certainly is going to help your numbers, but I don't. Um, I don't think it's a requirement. Jongo is to have, and your your schedule could just be it could be consistent. It just could be weird. Um, there's no reason you can't be consistent about it. Uh, it's just not going to be the same. It's not going to be every day. Your your schedule is going to rotate. You're going to have a few days here and then a few days off and then. But I think time, the time that you, uh, the time of day that you stream is probably the more consistent as opposed to what day of the week you're, strain, you're um, streaming. Uh, you're talking Chaos Online? All right, so oh, this is all damn triangles. That's right. How far across? Oh, that's so many triangles. I forgot how many triangles that was. <laughs> so he was a a pirate. Chaos Online was a pirate. I'm. He stopped streaming before he stopped streaming Starbase before I really started, so I didn't really get to watch him much. Well, I mean you don't have to worry about me. You just stream when you want to stream. Chaos rifle, not chaos online. Chaos rifle, you're right. And spice rub. I don't know spice rub. I'll have to look up spice rub. So how does this one go? I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how I did this. So it's like that. And then like that. I think we're getting close. And then like this. Uh yeah. Starbase didn't do him any good in real life. Yeah. It can be a... Uh, people can really get pretty wrapped up in the... I don't want to call it the politics, because it's not politics. But in the drama of video games. I've been too much in real life. Video games... There's nothing that can happen on here that can affect my real life at all. Outside of scheduling issues. If just my own consistency is the only thing that uh, can really bug me. It's my desire to be consistent, but I don't think there's anything you guys could do to really irritate me. I don't think it's possible. But, uh, yeah, I see a lot of, and not just Starbase, that's for sure, but there's lots of streamers that they uh, they get wrapped up in their own game drama, and it ends up causing some, some real-life stress. And, uh, yeah, it ends up taking a toll on them. To me, this is too much fun. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I read about it a lot with... I try to keep up with what's going on in the streamer community. I just read. I don't really interact with them at all, but... Like, right now, the big thing is there's a new streaming platform, which I don't even think I'm allowed to talk about here, but... I think you can get in trouble for talking about it. And uh, there's a lot of drama surrounding that, whether people stay or people go between Twitch and the other service. All right, come on. Only like 10 million more triangles to go. This part, anything on the diagonal in this game is awful. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so I don't, it doesn't matter to me. The biggest um, draws are for streamers that use Twitch as an income source because the other service has a better revenue uh, split. Twitch is a 50-50. And the other service is, it's either 90-10 or 95-5. So if, if you're a streamer that that uh, has subscriptions and you're getting bits and you're selling promos, a, a 40 to 45% increase in your income is a big deal. Well, in any video game, if, if there's enough people playing, there will be toxic individuals. That's just... That's just a fact of life. There are disagreeable people everywhere, and uh, they make things more difficult because it's fun for them. But uh, at this point, the most of the disagreeableness just isn't playing because it's not fun. There's nobody here to mess with. Uh, yeah, as a, as a parent of three teenagers, I'm capable of ignoring anything. Oh, did I lose my crafting bench somewhere? Gosh darn it. Uh, see, I don't even look at the Steam. So I'm not a person that looks at, that watches forums. Um... <laughs> And uh, if you don't read Reddit <laughs> and you don't read the Steam messages, then none of that stuff bothers me. Where did I leave my table? So the Steam community can be pretty rough. But those are just people that are disgruntled with uh, the way that Frozen Bite is, is conducting business. There's nothing we can do about that, so there's nothing to complain about. They've told us outright that there's not money to continue development at this point, and they're doing exactly that. Nothing. Well, I'm not going to say nothing, but they're doing... Uh, they're doing very little. So, but we should be expecting that. They've told us that. So, it, getting on the Steam boards and complaining doesn't... doesn't affect anything. I mean, we had, uh, I don't even remember his name now, there was a guy in here that, not that long ago, I was even station building just like this, and he was the uh, fella that messed up EOSCon, you guys were all pretty steamed about. So I mean, they're kind of everywhere, but those, to be honest, those people don't bother me really much either. My feelings can't be hurt. Yeah, real, well, leaving bad reviews is, is is certainly going to hurt the game. I don't think it hurts the community. It certainly hurts the game. Um, but, uh, I mean, the, at this point, the, some of those comments, while harsh, are justified. Um, the launch was not good, and the development halted shortly thereafter. So uh, there's plenty to complain about. But it does. It just is. It's a worthless complaint. You're you're screaming into the wind. So I think the game will come back quickly once development starts because people will be interested to see what they're developing. It's 
So I think the game will, once in development, will come back fairly quickly. Even if it's just people that are coming back to prove that it's still broken. Um, but they will come back. So it, it's just being ready for when the, the, the community returns. The game itself is is too interesting uh, and has such a good start conceptually that people will play it. We just got to ride out until we can get funding for the game. I wish they would start crowdsourcing funding. I would certainly give a, a Kickstarter a try. But we don't even know what kind of funding they're looking for. Are they looking for... Uh, a few million? Are they looking for tens of millions? Are they, you know, looking for Star Citizens 500 million? Um, so we just got to ride it out for now and give Frozen Byte the benefit of the doubt. We don't like their answers, but they have given us answers. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm, uh, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. And like I said, I'm going to give Frozen Byte the benefit of the doubt for the time being. And I like this game too much. I'm not gonna, not gonna stop. I've obviously, I've, uh, I've, I've bought in by uh, doing all of this. I'm doing, you know, spending all this time and money to get streams set up. So I'm definitely in, but uh, so I'm a little bit biased. But uh, I think there's, there's too much here for them to give up. And we've seen video games survive. Like uh, No Man's Sky, it survived. It had it had to probably have the worst launch ever. They uh, they gave a video game a different video game than they pitched. <laughs> like they didn't just give a ta terrible video game; they gave a different game. It wasn't anything what it was supposed to be. And look at, look at it now. No Man's Sky is a huge success after an utter failure. So there's hope. And I don't see Frozen Byte uh, ceasing to exist anytime soon. Like I don't see the company failing. So uh, we just, we wait our time, we're patient, and we build the community as we can. Yes, uh, but No Man's Sky at the beginning didn't. They did pull their head out of their ass and start making the game that they promised to make. But in that respect, Starbase gave us the game they promised. It just wasn't it wasn't finished. It was too rough. Um, and they still have time to pull their head out of their ass. I mean, No Man's Sky sucked for four plus years. So, I mean, I played... I played No Man's Sky I from the essentially the day it came out. Not the day, but you know, that, that first rush when it came out. Um and it was utterly awful and it took them years to get back the community to even even consider what they were doing. So um I've I've still got hope for that. That one doesn't go there. It's like this. So we need one more layer. We'll make sure that's nine across. So I still I still have a lot of hope for this game. Um, I I wish there was a I wish there was a community moderator a liaison that they kept. Three six seven eight nine. Whether that was Kai um, or anyone. You like the old No Man's Sky more than the new one. I like the idea and the sandbox with nothing. Well, you can still do that. All of that still exists. I uh, there's there's no requirements in in uh, No Man's Sky to do anything. I mean, I would stream No Man's Sky from the very beginning, but I don't I don't play games uh, in the same way, obviously, as most players play. Um. And I don't, I don't necessarily think there's an audience for No Man's Sky the way that I play it. So, 
especially in a in a single player game because that is essentially a single player game it has some co-op features too but it's just single they should just pay the 38 bucks and see if chat gpt can finish it <laughs> uh chat gpt how the hell did i all right next section i don't remember how i built and I'm out of coffee. That's not good. That's all right, though. It is... Uh, I've reached the end of my time for the day. Anyways, I am going to see how I built this thing, though. I ChatGPT is amazing and scary at the same time. It's... Oh, I remember now how I did this. <laughs> I couldn't even remember how I, how I built the damn thing. <laughs> um, one... How many layers is it? That's what I need to know. One, two, three, four, five. That's five up. I'm going to run back and at least start it so I can, uh, while I'm in the mindset. And I might uh, find some time later on tonight if you guys would be, well, it'll be super late for you guys. You guys are all in Europe. That's one of the reasons I don't stream at night is there's not really an audio, uh, a uh, Starbase audience late at night. So I don't stream in my evening very often. Uh, it's because it's actually you'd watch. You're normally the one streaming. I watch you. <laughs> you can't watch me. I watch you in the evenings. I, is it a walkway? Oh, I don't. This is the part that kills me every time. I don't remember how I. Uh, I built it's got to be this piece <laughs> and there's a it's got to be it's the only ones I have in my inventory so Hot. and people love to watch your moon trips I think that's crazy to watch you uh not crazy to watch you but crazy to watch you just moon mine I mean I guess I watched Cerulean do it so why not trying to remember how I built this thing <laughs> at all. How do I even do this? It's not that piece. How the F do I put this together? Like this? And then, and there's another piece somewhere. This one, maybe. That's not that one. What the hell? You just want to show off the moons and mining as a bonus? Oh, there's the piece. Okay, now we're getting closer. <laughs> I literally could not remember how to do this. No, it's not that one. Oh, come on. Put that there. There. Oh, man, that was way tougher than I... Oh, I remember. I have to put down, like, a shit ton of these things. And then I follow them up with these. And then I have to put down another one. Next time, create a hot bar with the parts you needed to build that. Yeah, I suck at that whole hot bar thing. Um... <laughs> There are very there's many shortcomings uh, in game playing that I have, and, and hot bar proper hot bar management would be one of them. Okay.
How many is that? One, two, three, the five. One, two, three, four. I think that's right. That looks right. Hopefully it matches. Otherwise, we're just going with it anyways. What goes here? Another one of these, maybe? That's it. Good point for the game. What, hot bar management? Te teaching pe people how to set up hot bars? That would be excellent. Oh, that's not right. It has to like... Something's not right here. This should be up half a one. Urgh. Should go tight up against that. But it should be out here. Like this should be like this is how it should be. So these are all off half a block. Damn it. Alright, I knew something wasn't right. Yeah, I should probably teach hot bars. Uh, at least go through the process of setting up hot bars. Uh, like I said, I suck at it, so probably not the best teacher for it. So these guys. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. This is why I don't build ships, because. Uh, this is the same as building ships, only way easier, and I still can't do it. So like this, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's it. It's still the right five, but now I have to, what, I have to put these ones down? And then I have to pick these back up and do it again. No, this one. Yeah, probably like this. All right, I remember now. Because then I have to go back to these. And put these in place. I remember just in time to quit. Yeah, that's how it is. Oh, always so frustrating to relearn this. But that'll get me close. All right, everybody. Let's see. Is there anybody else streaming today? Xenon, you're not streaming yet, are you? Live channels. Currently says there's no live channels. I am streaming, right? Oh, there I am. Okay. Well, then I want to say thank you to everyone as always. I appreciate your time and your attention. I hope you guys had a wonderful time and uh, that you have an excellent evening. And I will see you at the normal time tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. So I will see you at the normal time tomorrow. And, uh, and we'll have some fun then. So you guys take care. Take it easy. And I hope you see you again tomorrow. So see you later.